This is the point at which we say, Welcome to Mobi. Mobi in Badagri happens to be a place you need to visit. Whenever you come to Badagri and you want to learn about what actually transpired in the city of Badagri and the whole of Nigeria, you need to come here to have a clear understanding of how our strong men were handled, mishandled, mismanaged and misutilized by the so-called foreign powers that we are all crying and shouting hey to. I tell you, a visit to this place will open your eyes, you will discover the history of what our black men went through. <laughs> I want to control myself. I do not want to see myself going too emotional about what has happened. But what this is driving me into is the fact that I want to be part of those that will make the ordinary black man to stand with their chest high and to say, we can do better. Once again, Welcome to Mobi Museum, where heritage is well preserved. Follow me. Lying here, simply you are looking at 200 men lying there on the floor. Because each of these cannon guns you are looking at is in exchange for 100 slaves per one. And you can imagine that that is just for the cannon gun. So having two cannon guns for 200 vibrant, fully agile Africans. And after the cannon gun has been gotten by these so-called slave masters, you still need to exchange another set of human beings to get the cannon gunpowder. Painful thing is that the exchange for this cannon gun in which 200 African slaves had to go for was actually a means of using our fellow black men to fight against ourselves so that we can continue to sell our, our vibrant African youth into the hand of the so-called slave masters. But thank God that in the year 1886, the same cannon gun was part of what we, the Badagri people, used to demand for our freedom. Welcome to the place where history of what we Africans, the beautiful, natured and well forgiven. I tell you, Africans are very, very well forgiven. We forgive a lot because <laughs> We only take somebody that can forgive to just forget about what has been done. Where had the real change used on our forefathers during the period of slave trade? Transatlantic slave trade lasted for about 350 to 400 years in Badagri. And Badagri during that period was known to be a slave corridor. Just as they practice in Calabar, we have a slave market in Calabar called Aeon Slave Market. Here in Badagri, we have a market called Lekete Slave Market. Now, the black people usually bring their slaves to, the, to Badagri. They don't have access to the white people. So they sell to people of Badagri. Why the people of Badagri sell to the white men? So in, and in the market days in Badagri, over 300 slaves are sold every market day. Over 17,000 slaves sold annually here in Badagri. So the change there were used on our forefathers then, as soon as they hand over slaves to the white people, they put in around there. And thank God for the life of the man buried there, Chief Sumu Mobi. The father of the man buried there was a middleman between the white and the black. He buys slaves from the black and sells to the white men. The father and other seven chiefs in Badagri signed the Treaty of the Abolition of Slavery in the year 1852. But the Portuguese slave merchants were still coming to Badagri. The father died. The son doesn't like the business. So in the year 1886, he waged war against the Portuguese slave merchants. He now sees the last vessel. I was living by that grid that year. The slave inside the vessel, these are the chains around their neck. 
The father was nicknamed Moby by the white men. Whenever they come around to buy slaves, the father, he doesn't understand English. So we always entertain the white people with school or not. And he tells them Yoruba language, a Moby J. This people doesn't understand what he was saying. So they gave him a nickname, which is Moby. The family now adopts them in Moby as a family name. Moby is now a Shikan's title in Badagi of today. Mm. So if not for the son that waged war against them in the year 1886, the trade will last longer. And he died on the 16th of October, 1893. This is great. Back to the chain. This is called the neck lock. And this is what a slave will have around his or her neck. Walk in the farm with this for 18 hours every day. While traveling, this will be around them for three to four months before they get to their final destination. You can feel the weight of the chain. My goodness. My goodness. You know. <laughs> My goodness. I'm, I'm trying to just gather words to express, oh my God, you know, if you, you can use this as gymming, you can use this to gym as a trainer, you can use this for workouts, if this is actually what these guys have come here to do, then I wonder if they are really human beings, and the question that comes to mind is that when you subject a human being that is just like yourself to this kind of punishment and you are also buying this slave to go and walk out for you over there how do you think they are going to even survive with this another part of it is the fact that i find it painful that some of our black brothers are also into this selling fellow human beings to the white so painful a thing. Yeah. Like, so can, like, what's the weight of this? Uh, this chain? is this is close to fifty kg. The belief of the white men is if they can, if the the slave can actually carry this for that long, they will have more strength. So if they can survive this, then they can they can withstand any situation in life. So this is called the neck lock, and this is called the mouth slave. We have two categories of slaves. We have slaves that work in the house, and we have slaves that work in the farm. Those that work in the, in the house, we call them domestic slaves. Those that work in the farm, we call them field slaves or plantation slaves. Because the white people are afraid that when slaves communicate to one another while working on the farm, they may revolt. Or because they don't want them to eat while working on the farm, they pierce the lips of the plantation slaves, the lower and the upper lip. In the morning when they are set to go to the work, they put this on their mouth and padlock their mouth like this for them not to eat or talk while working in the farm. This is called the light chain. Light chain. And this is used on the hands of the small children. There was a time this will look at it that coming down to Badagri is expensive. They have some people, they call them the breeders. Their job is to sleep with female slaves, impregnate them, just like we have baby factory today. Now, then your wealth will be determined by the numbers of slaves you have, not by the money you have in your account. So, the children, as soon as they give birth, is for the, the day one is a slave. And these children were usually not allowed to move closer to their parents while working on the farm. So, they usually group the children together. They chain them, like three of them, they chain their hands together, make them sit under a tree, far away from where their parents are working. For them not to distract their parents while working or step on what the parents have planted. So this is called a light chain. And this is a torture weapon. This is used on slavery refuse and order made by a white man. Or for slavery refuse to work in the farm. The force they are handing to this down to the wrist. Most of the time they will need to break the bone before this will get to the wrist. After forcing this to the wrist, they made the slave climb the platform. The master also climbs the platform. And they screw this up to a tall tree. The master comes down and removes the platform. He said, We now be suspended with the jingling from money tonight. Most of the time, they prefer to punish in the farm so that while other slaves are working in the farm, they see that slaves and that will serve as a deterrent to other slaves. This is called the Hanko Lock. And this is used on two slaves at a time. Whenever they are going out in the morning, 
they have this around their neck and this will be on their ankle for two of them together for them not to run away because their belief is once they move faster than the white people they can remove this chain and run away so this will have to be on their leg to reduce their movement and two of them will have to share this two and legs in this time. My goodness. So the two of them, their leg, one one leg, and they will need to work with this around their ankle. My goodness. At the same time. I want us to just look at look at how how bad bad could be spelt. Having two grown human legs in between this, and you still expect them to walk to walk freely for you and to walk with a great mind. I wonder if this set of human beings are really carrying a hat around for them to be doing this. This is called the Brandon Hyon. During the period of sleep, they still don't pay name. They get the name of their master. And for the master to be able to identify his slaves, you need to write his name on the body of the slave. So, as soon as they hand over slaves to them, they write their name on the body of the slave. And also, like, 10, 15 slave master can come to Badagri at a time to buy slaves. They are using just one vessel to transport their slaves back to their destination. For them to be able to identify their slaves, they use this to write in them on the body of the slaves. They put this in fire when this is red hot, then they use it to write in on the body of the slaves. And this is what we have adopted as fashion today. In Nigeria today, or Lagos or Abekta, for example, we have some families with English names. These are the people that return back after the abolition of slave trade. We have Brazilian quarters in, in Lagos. They return back after the abolition of slave trade. These people were not from Lagos, but they have nowhere to go. They have to settle down in Brazil. In Lagos, we had names like Smith, Cole, Darusha, the Silva, Buckner. All those names were not Nigerian names. They adopted the names from the white people. So the white people usually use this to write names on their body. So as for them to be able to re re identify their slaves. The second function of this is to pierce the lips of the slaves before they padlock it. And the last function, the foot of any slave that tries to run away being captured. Running away is the greatest of things there. So whenever any slave tries to run away being captured, they put this in fire, put the leg of the slave on the falling tree, and eat this into the foot of the slave. Why red hot? They pierce the leg or break the bone inside the leg. And that's why you call this branding iron or bone breaker. But in a situation where they are unable to capture that slave alive, they have dogs, they are free to run after such slaves. As soon as the dog gets hold of the slaves, they cut off the throat of the slaves. And the dog will go back to the master with the blood in his mouth. In the situation whereby the dog doesn't return on time, they release more dogs to go after the slave. The white people will rather prefer a slave to die than for that slave to run away. Mm. This was the money we spent in Africa in those days. Cowries. But the white people doesn't recognize this as money. And that led to the introduction of trade by butter. During the period of slave trade, a bottle of dry gin, whiskey, brandy, or wine was in essence of 10 human beings. 10 good human beings. 10 good human beings are exchanged for just this. It shows how reckless these guys are. And it shows how less thinking. Some of us are to each other. Even, even, then you man. Even up to date, we believe that whatever that comes from their hand is, is better than whatever we have in Africa. Hmm. Today now, we don't have anything of our own. We, we depend on the white people to survive in Nigeria, which is not supposed to be. What we have is, is good enough to sustain us in Africa. Mirror was the nursing of 10 human beings because our people have not seen themselves in a mirror before. So when they brought mirror to them, it was like a magic seeing themselves in a mirror. So for that, they were standing human beings for, ten, uh, for a, a mirror for 10 human beings. This is more size of the cannon gun outside. This was the nursing of 40 human beings and the big one for 100 human beings. Why do we need this? They brought this to us to wage war against ourselves. So are we capture slaves and sell back to the white people? Sir, during the period of slave trade, whenever the white people approach you for the business, if you refuse to join the trade, somebody close by is ready to sell you. Or the white people is ready to kill you and kill your entire family. Kill you, capture your people, 
and take them out of the country. So the only option you have is to to add to to to, to join the trade. This badagri we have presently is not the original badagri. The original badagri is at the back of the water, ahead of us. So it's because the white people were coming to capture our people was the reason why they moved down there. And when they moved down here, they negotiated with our head. Okay, we will not capture you people again. The only the only thing would, you can do for us is to help us to buy slaves. Then we will settle. That was when they introduced the business to our forefathers in Badagri. Over there is a slave drinking water bowl. What is this one? That's Kolano. It's the source of the Mobi family name. Okay. Here's the slave drinking water bowl. 40 to 50 slaves are meant to drink water from this bowl at a time. They drink with their hands inside to the back. So they bend down, leave water like dogs. Now for pregnant woman, for somebody who could not bend down, they give one handful of water for one day. In the course of trying to drink water, they push one another. They get caught by the heads of the pot. Their blood drips into the water. They will start to drink the water like that. Because they have access to food and water once in a day. Over here, in British West Indies, slavery was abolished in the year 1833. And the British government and the Portuguese government used Badagri as a battleground in those days. Because both of them want to be in control of Badagri because of the slaves they are getting from here. So when the trade was abolished in British, the British government supported us in Badagri to wage war against the Portuguese slave nations. And you decide that most of the slaves taken out of Africa, the majority of them were taken to Brazil. And that is why you, you, when you get to Brazil now, you see that most of our culture, the Yoruba land are part of in Brazil. They went there with their, with their gold. And any slave from that hand usually trace their route back to Badagri. Because in Brazil, you see Yoruba people there. And the only place we have Yoruba in Africa is Nigeria. So, the trade was abolished in Australia in the 1861 and United States in 1863. In Brazil, slave trade was abolished in the 1886. That was two years after the trade was abolished in Badagri, when there was no, other, no, no, no slaves for them to sell in their market. The trade was abolished in Africa in the year 1870. That was 60 years after the trade was abolished in Africa, it was abolished in Malaysia by the help of Shinsumu Mobi. Now, Shinsumu Mobi fought them in the year 1886. I don't know if it was an early missionary that came to Malaysia that preached to him. All I know is that when they signed the Treaty of the Abolition of Slave Trade in the year 1852, the first missionary that came to Malaysia, that is the Methodist missionary and the Anglican missionary, were those that witnessed the signing of the treaty signed by Badagri people and the British government in the year 1852. Lastly, what really made Badagri to be the biggest market in those days is the spirit at the nation well. We have this well at the point of no return and there is still water inside since that time to do. The water inside has not dried up. Why do we call it spirit at the nation well? Slaves were forced to drink from this well, make this recitation, after which they become less aggressive and lost their memory. The researcher goes us, I am leaving this land, my spirit goes, my spirit goes, lives with me. I shall not come back now. My shackle do not break. It is the shackle that holds the ship down. My ancestors bear me witness, I shall not return. This land shall depart, my soul do not revolt. My spirit goes along with me, I depart to the land unknown, I shall not return. After reciting this and drinking from this water, they become less aggressive and lost their memory. You are welcome to my library. The little friend will give you a name. Oh! <laughs> yes, sir. Oh! Now I see the connection. Now I see the connection. You know, the way he was telling it, he wasn't telling it like a story. He was actually saying it based on experience from the family lineage that he belongs to. And I'm so happy that I'm standing side by side with one of the grandchildren of the man that was part of those that fought for the what abolition of slave trade here in Nigeria, West Africa. And if I must say anything, is the fact that while, while you were telling us about this place, I was just like, if the, if the so-called powers that be in Badagri, they were able to hypnotize people through this well, actually, why were they not able to use the same power to make the white lose consciousness, lose their memory, lose their grip with respect to slave trade? 
but as you know what sometimes you listen to history and you have so many questions left to be asked because if actually they have used their supernatural powers to wage war against the so-called invaders i don't think we'll be where we are today but all the same we are still so much very happy that we can have someone of repute a family i tell you your family is a blessing and a someone of repute that could stand out even while his own father was part of those that are engaged in the business but the he son never joined the trade but the son never joined the trade and he decided to be a change we are all in this place we are going to these numerous places just because we want to be an agent of change we are not trying to stir up anger of what has happened in the past but we want us to remember where we are coming from so that we can be wiser and take the necessary step so that we don't get recaptured once again because what is actually going on now is another form of slave trade this time the chains are not on our neck the chains are not on our leg but they are what they are hanging in the minds and the hearts modern, of people modern slavery yeah now they, we still practice it anyway in Whoa. africa Whoa. now today they introduce to you oh i'm taking you out of the country i'm giving you a business but take, taking them out of the country they use them for another thing entirely. exactly what about those people crossing the atlantic ocean to, to libya most of them perish on their way but if they have come to Badagri, see all these things. I don't think there is any need for us to want to go to a foreign, a, 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 a strange man country. Because over there, they use us anyhow. So you need to see the black Americans anytime they come. They are treated like a second class citizen. In fact, some of them wish they could come back to Nigeria. But with the present situation of our country... Wow. That's where we have come to make a change and let me quickly tell you part of the reason why we are here is to help pick one or two when i mean one or two as many that we could help here that are youth that want to learn a craft or the other but their parents are not financially okay our foundation we pay for their training and after some time we monitor them when they are serious we buy them the startup machine so in case, I'm sure we are not going to lose contact. No in case you have any youth that is serious, that want to learn, yes, we are here to help. It's high time we stop this what, this nonsense of trying to walk out of the country instead of improving it. Be a difference and make a difference. Thank you. In part two of this documentary, I shall be taking you to the Seriki Abbas Williams slave barracoon and surprisingly, we were met with the greatest shock of our lifetime. I discovered my paternal root here in Badagri. Little did we know that the local king of that community was my uncle as he screamed when he heard me mention my father's name and talking to my kids that my dad is from this village but we never know our paternal family. Little did we know that this same king was my uncle, my father's brother from the mother's side. And from there we shall be proceeding to the point of no return where our African brothers and sisters were shipped just like ordinary animals. To wrap it up, we got some youths in the village that are requesting for empowerment and immediately we bought the machine for one of them. <laughs>